Welcome everyone, Isaac here. Today I'll be showing you how to access and run a job on Xanadu's Quantum Computational Advantage hardware, Borealis. This video is based off of our quick start demo that can be found in the description down below. We're going to be using Xanadu Cloud to run code today, so we recommend checking out our video on how to run jobs on Xanadu's X series devices if you aren't already familiar with Xanadu Cloud. There's a link in the description below for that. We also recommend that you check out our tutorials on time domain photonic circuits, but it's not strictly necessary. And just a disclaimer before we get started, there are several advanced topics in this video that won't be covered since we're already going to cover a lot of ground here, but there are extremely helpful and informative tutorials on the Strawberry Fields website. Where needed, I'll make sure to point you to the description of this video to learn more about the relevant topic. But without further ado, let's get started to today's video, which is on Borealis. Xanadu recently published results demonstrating Quantum Computational Advantage, or QCA for short. So what is QCA? We're in the early stages of quantum computing, meaning that quantum computers aren't commercially relevant yet, nor are they able to do day-to-day -day tasks like the classical computers we're used to. Yet, even with all this in mind, quantum computers can still computationally outperform classical ones on well-defined tasks. Demonstrating these instances constitutes QCA, and these demonstrations are extremely important for research and development within quantum computing, and they mark a paradigm shift towards a quantum future. Borealis, Xanadu's 216 squeezed qubit photonic device, was able to perform a task called Gaussian boson sampling, or GBS for short, in less than a second compared to the thousands of years that one of the fastest and largest supercomputers in the entire world would need, which is incredible. The gory details of all of this can be found in our paper published in Nature, link in the description for that as well. And not only did we demonstrate quantum computational advantage, in line with our mission to build quantum computers that are useful and available to people everywhere, Borealis is also the first freely and publicly available quantum computational advantage device ever through Xanadu Cloud, which is what brings us to today's video. In fact, you will be able to run our quantum computational advantage experiment yourself right from the seat that you're sitting in right now. Let's dive in. When you now log into Xanadu Cloud, you'll see an additional device in our quantum devices list, namely Borealis. Click on the Penny Lane tab on the left, and then click on the Penny Lane notebook to get started writing your program for Borealis. All of our hardware is programmable through Strawberry Fields, so we'll import Strawberry Fields, and we're going to import NumPy as well. The next thing we'll do is actually call Borealis in our code. So how we do this is by defining an engine with sf.remoteEngine. And to define an engine, all we do is give it the device name, and in this case, it's Borealis. And essentially what the remote engine class is, is the vessel for interfacing our code with the hardware itself. And to actually define the device in our program, we call the corresponding property of the engine we just created, namely eng.device. With Borealis called, now we just need to tell it what to do. And this is where the specifics of the hardware really do come into play. Borealis is based on time domain multiplexing technology, or TDM technology, which means that time-ordered squeezed light pulses interfere with one another with the help of optical delay loops, beam splitters, and phase shifters. Those are going to be our three essential ingredients to our program for Borealis to execute. Conveniently, there are helper functions built into Strawberry Fields that do the heavy lifting for us in terms of defining the program ingredients and parameters. The two functions we'll need are within the strawberryfields.tdm module. And they're called borealis underscore gbs and get mode indices. Let's break each one of these helper functions down one at a time. The borealis gbs function defines the beam splitter and phase shifter parameters within our program. Calling it essentially gives you the parameters extremely close to those used in Xanadu's paper published in Nature. I'm going to call the output of borealis gbs gate args list. And again, this is for the phase shifters and beam splitters. And when we call the function borealis gbs, we just need to supply the device object we created. So device the number of modes in our program, which we'll do 216, which is in line with our paper published in Nature, and the squeezing level for our modes, which is another keyword argument called squeezing, and it accepts three different string options, low, medium, or high, and for here, we'll choose high. Okay, next function to go over is the get mode indices helper function. And this helper function's job is to calculate the mode indices for use in a TDM program within Strawberry Fields. The correct mode indices are needed to correctly define our gates' action on the modes that are coming in and out of the delay loops in the TDM architecture. The function will return the correct mode indices, small n, and the number of modes, capital N, that are alive at the same time in the program. The mode indices, small n, will allow us to call the correct 
correct key modes later on when we define the gates in our program. So it's very important. But when we call the get mode indices helper function, we just need to supply it the list of loop delays. And specifically for Borealis, there are three loops with delay units of one, six, and 36. And we just need to supply it a list of those numbers. And when you execute this, you might get a few warning messages. Don't worry at all. This is just Borealis correcting a few of the parameters that the helper functions defined. Okay, so finally, we can actually start making the circuit. So we need to actually import the operations and gates involved. So from the ops module within Strawberry Fields, we need to import S gate, which will do the initial squeezing for us, the R gate, which performs our phase shifting, and the beam splitter gate, BS gate. And lastly, at the end of our program, we're going to be doing FOC basis measurements. So we just also need to import measure FOC. Okay, so to define our program, we first need to create an instance of the TDM program class within Strawberry Fields. So we'll call our program prog. We just call sf.tdm program. And all we need to do when we call TDM program is give it capital N, which if you recall, is the number of modes that are alive at the same time in the program. And we got this by calling the get mode indices helper function right up here. Now we can lay out the operations in our program, one per line using the Blackbird syntax. And there's a link in the description below for a great tutorial we have on what the Blackbird syntax is and how to use it. We define the operations in our program within a context manager built into the program we just created by calling prog.context. We pass it the unpacked gate arguments we created earlier. So gate args list. Then we want to have access within the context manager to the gate parameters, which we'll call P, and the Q modes themselves, which we'll call Q. Okay, so the first operation within our circuit, so we call S gate, and we just need to supply it the squeezing amount, which is the zeroth index of our parameters P, and we apply this to mode Q of N, small n, of zero. Note here that the proper mode index is supplied by small end, which we got from the helper function get mode indices before. Then there are three bunches of gates to apply next, each of which are associated with a delay loop. So we're going to write a for loop that loops over our three delay loops. That's a lot of loops. And as our diagram tells us, we need a phase rotation gate followed by a beam splitter gate for each loop. So let's just write out what the gates are in order first and we'll define the modes they act on and the parameters they need to define the actual gates in a second. So our first gate is a phase shifter gate and the next one is a beam splitter gate. So we just need to make sure that we pass the right parameters to these gates from our parameter list P. So the way the parameter list P is ordered or structured is in the following way. There's the squeezing amount in the zeroth index, the delay one rotation or phase shift, the delay one beam splitter argument, the delay two phase shift, the delay two beam splitter argument, the delay three phase shift, and the delay three beam splitter argument. To summarize, the phase shifting arguments after the zeroth index get the odd elements of P and the beam splitter gates get the even ind indices of P. So within our for loop, the phase shifting gate gets the odd elements of our parameter list P. So we can just do two times I, our index, plus one to make sure we get the odd elements only. And the beam splitter gates get the even entries. So it's again, two times I, but plus two, because we need to make sure that we're not getting the zeroth element because that's allotted to the squeezing amount. Now we also want these beam splitters to be symmetric. So the second argument we need to give the beam splitter gate, the phase angle must be pi over two. Now the phase shifting gates are going to apply to Q of N of I. And for the beam splitter gate, we write a tuple of Q modes. Okay, so that's all the gates in our circuit. We just need to do the measurement at the very end. So we call measure FOC on the zeroth Q mode. Now we're ready to actually run our program on Borealis. So let's grab all of our results in a thing called results and call eng.run. And within this run function, we need to give the program that we defined called prog, the number of measurements we'd like to ask Borealis for or shots. In this case, let's just do 10 for simplicity. And after our program runs, we'll just print the samples off. All right, and that finished. And at this point, your jaw should be on the floor because you just demonstrated quantum computational advantage. Go get yourself a coffee or something. You worked really hard for this. Treat yourself. And that'll do it for today's video. You now have the basic instructions required for how to run our quantum computational advantage experiment on Borealis. If you have any questions, do post them in the Xanadu discussion forum, link in the description down below for that. If you found this video useful, give us a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe for more quantum programming content from Xanadu.